In this video, I'm going to tell you about cheating in the hobby side of wargaming and what should be done to those who commit these crimes. There is a not insignificant amount of talk about cheating in tabletop wargaming, and online it is pretty prevalent, the, the talk about it. I hear about it even in my neck of the woods, and I'm not particularly a competitive player. Usually it is talking about competitive play, people who cheat at a tournament or cheat at a, at a GT or, or, you know, all those different types of things that can happen when potentially money is on the line or who knows. And I made a video about sportsmanship and kind of cheating, sort of, Chow, quite some time ago. But that's not what I'm talking about in this particular video. In this video, I'm talking about cheating at the hobby side of tabletop wargaming, like the painting and the building and the whatnot. Now, my good friend Vince Ventruella, who you should be following on uh, YouTube, uh, he has an entire series of videos called Hobby Cheating. And in those videos, he basically teaches you quick little techniques to, to kind of get your, your, your paint jobs further down the road. Um, you know, how to paint armor, you know, white armor, how to paint uh, true metallics, blah, blah, you know, all these different things. And there's tons and tons and tons of them. You should definitely look in the description below and find the links to Vince's stuff. Um, but here's the thing about his hobby cheating um, series. There's two problems with it to some degree. And the first one's a little bit more problematic than the second one. But in the first problem, the fact that he uses the word cheating in the um, title, and he and I have had this conversation, and he's the one who actually brought it up to me, the fact that he calls it hobby cheating actually kind of makes YouTube sort of ignore it a little bit more because the word cheating is looked upon by YouTube frequently to be attached to things like I caught my ex cheating type videos and stuff like that, more, you know, more about the, the the language of love as opposed to the language of you know paint and bristle, and so because of that, he just found that sometimes those videos don't get uh, found as much, and which is maybe why you maybe haven't heard of this particular series, but you should definitely link below, go go look at it. Uh, the second thing about hobby cheating is uh, there's no such thing. All apologies to Vince. Uh, he he also believes that there is no such thing as actual cheating. The title of his series is facetious at best. So wh what this means is like what he's teaching you are hacks, maybe, um, you know, uh, shortcuts. Uh, there's a lot of other words technically that you could use in those situations, but none of them are bad. This is the most important thing you should take away from this video. There is no such thing as hobby cheating within the painting and the building and all that kind of stuff. Anything that you can do to get your models to the point you want to get them to, whether it's a new technology, whether it is uh, an airbrush, whether it is washes, whether it is um, you know, contrast paints, anything along those lines, none of that's cheating. It's just newer technology and newer techniques, and you can choose to use them or not. The most recent kind of flare up of, well, that's kind of cheating, isn't it? That's come out in the last year or so has been contrast paints. And as a person who's been painting for a long time, I kind of love contrast paints. Um, I don't generally use them the way that Games Workshop tells you to use them, which maybe that's cheating right there. I don't know. Uh, but generally they explain you spray this kind of light colored primer, whether it's the, the kind of gray primer or the kind of tan primer, and then you put these colors over the top of it. I generally don't use it that way. I use these very transparent, but yet kind of thick, yet still pretty fluid uh, pigments, generally sometimes almost as a glaze. Sometimes I will um, thin it down with the, the contrast medium to use it as a glaze. Other times I will put it right over a black and white zenithal, and it's great for that. That's honestly, in my opinion, the best way to use contrast these days, putting it over a flat, normal, uh, prime, like a light colored prime, they just kind of fall just not very contrasty. They fall flat, frankly, you know, but when you put them over a nice um, black and white zenithal or, you know, maybe it's a white to brown or a white to dark green or something like that. And then put some of that, it mm, just, it, they, they work great and they're not cheating. They're a new technology that you can use or not. And if you get the, the, the effect that you like with it, then wh wh how is that cheating? Before contrasts, of course, there was airbrushing that a lot of people talked about. And they said, well, it's just, you know, you can get your blends so smooth and perfect with an airbrush 
then it's just basically cheating. Well, uh, except here's a couple of different problems with that. Number one, it's actually not that easy to get your blends perfectly smooth with an airbrush. It is, is it easier than say wet blending? Certainly. Is it easier than thousands of layers of glazes? Absolutely. But it's still, you can goof up airbrushes. I've done it. I'll, I'll do it again. Don't, you, you can't stop me. But nonetheless, once you do get the hang of it, even if you're just gonna use something like the airbrush to prime with, you know, so that you can prime in the winter. You live in a, a country or a place in the world like I do where it sucks a lot of the time to go outside for lots of different reasons. And, and so, you know, you want to be able to prime in the house very easily and quickly or prime just one model as opposed to having to prime a whole bunch with a rattle can. That's not cheating. You're just using the airbrush. It's a piece of technology that you can use and it works really, really well for its intended purpose. And generally, admittedly, sometimes you can look at a piece and say, I know that was airbrushed. But if you like that look, if you like that gradient, tons and tons of gradients all over the place, like every panel's got a gradient to it, if that's the thing that you like, well then you're not cheating, you're doing the thing and getting the effect that you want. No one can tell you you're cheating because what you're doing is getting a finished product. If they're at the shop, let's say, and they say, well that's kind of cheating to use an airbrush or to use uh, you know, washes or to use contrast paint, sometimes look at what they're doing. Do they have painted models? Because a lot of times, they kind of don't. As I get to be nearly a half a century old, I do find that when people say things like that in this particular realm, in a creative realm that has no specific rules, and they say, well, that's cheating. If you use that, that's cheating. Very frequently, that's sour grapes is what that is. What that means is that they kind of either wish they could do that, maybe they don't have the space for an airbrush, or maybe they don't have the money for an airbrush, or maybe they just don't have the patience, or whatever the deal is. But it's not cheating. You know, if they choose to paint one way and you choose to paint another, as long as you're both happy with the results, it's, it, it, you, you can't be cheating. That's, the, that's really the important thing to take away, is you can't be cheating as long as you are getting a result that you're happy with. If you are paying somebody else to paint your models, a commission painter, because you want to have them on the table and they want to look amazing, even that's not cheating. You at least did the work to make the money to pay this person. You employed somebody, gave them some money, they gave you a, a finished product. I mean, this, that's how the world's supposed to work, right? So that's not cheating either. Now, if you go to a tournament and you tell the people there that you painted those models and then you win some sort of award, technically that is sort of cheating, but again, we're talking about tournaments again. And when we're just talking about, I want models that are on the table that make me happy, everything from paying a really good commission painter a whole bunch of money to make amazing look at pieces of art down to anything else. In fact, some people might say that using a brush is cheating because really you should just be using your pinkies or not even the whole flat part, just the nail. Like that's, like that's the way they used to do it back in the caveman days. That's how they painted their minis was with a nail. It just, it doesn't make any sense to limit yourself to specific things because you say it's either too easy. I mean, that's the whole point of easy. Do you have a car? Do you have a bicycle? Or do you just walk everywhere? It's kind of the same thing. There's nothing cheating about using technology to get the results you want. Now, if it's a foot race, getting in a Ferrari is cheating. And again, you folks in the comments, I get you. But if we're talking about, I want painted models, you can't cheat. It's not possible.